This is your psychic girlfriend, Robin Richardson. And if you're like me, you're interested in how the universe works and in all things mystical. So let's explore it together. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the podcast. Hello, hello, this is Robin Richardson, your psychic girlfriend, and I am back with another episode of my podcast. And one of the things that's really interesting is like, there's like themes that go on in my life, and I'm like, I've got to share this with you. Uh, as you know, I take a lot of clients, and I do coaching, intuitive coaching, and I do psychic readings and readings from the Akashic Records. And I help people navigate life. Well, a lot of um, what comes up and what has been coming up lately is relationships. And it's big. It's a big theme in my life. Um, not only friendships, but um, romantic relationships. And so people come to me all the time and ask for guidance. And, um, you know, one of the things I want to point out is that a lot of us are just reacting to our circumstances. Um a lot of us are repeating patterns of the past because that's how our mind is. Our, our mind, our brain is a record of the past. And so we um, continue to repeat patterns, I guess if you will say. And I know I have. Um, and I am currently uh, looking, I shouldn't say looking for, how am I going to say it? Um, attracting and welcoming a life partner into my life. And so um, part of that includes looking at the foundation of healthy relationships. And when I was in a marriage, I wasn't my best self. I was the self that I was. I, you know, I, if you had asked me then I was my best self. But I was repeating patterns that were familiar to me, um, which most of us do. And I would read books on how to be healthy in a relationship. And my partner at the time would kind of make fun of me because I was really interested in making the relationship better and getting out of trying to fix or... um, change my circumstances from the exterior, but really to like work on myself. And um, anyway, I found this 10 Days to Better Relationships by Michael Sorensen. And I th- and I want to like walk through this a little bit because I think it's really good. And um, if you're listening to the podcast and you're trying to manifest a love relationship. Um, I, I, I want you to listen and be open to this because I feel like a lot of us base our worth on having a relationship, having a romance. I know I did. I know that like when I was younger and I just got out of college, I know that like the track that my parents had had for me where my mother pushed it was, you know, you get married and you have a family and that's, that was, that's what would make you, um, valuable, I guess, you know, uh, I'm much older now and I, and I certainly do not, um, push that on my kids. I want them to have healthy relationships, whether it's with, um, us, their parents, their friendships or romantic partners, like what I want for them is a healthy relationship, whatever that might look like for them. And I don't push um, the idea of marriage because it may not be right for them. So, you know, I push whatever they want. <laughs> so the question that uh, Michael Sorensen asks is who is responsible for your happiness? And that should be really an easy no-brainer. Um, but you are the only person responsible for your happiness. So no other, no outside circumstances would create happiness for you. Like the happiness has to be 
100% an inside job. And yes, when the outside reflects what's in the inside, it's so much more enjoyable. So I was raised to believe that my partner was responsible for my happiness. And, and there's still echoes of that. There's still like this, oh gosh, you know, if he doesn't do X, Y, and Z, he's not making me happy. What? You know, this is freaking crazy. And when I was working through my divorce and afterwards I did a um, program that was really intense and it did come to the conclusion. I came to the conclusion, number one, you have to complete the past. You have to complete whatever's going on in the past. So I did a lot of work around that. And, and how do you complete? And complete for me is um, owning and being accountable and responsible for my life 100 percent it was not my lover's fault it wasn't my parents fault it's not anybody's problem but my own and i learned that nobody can make me feel any way um i may feel a certain way about something but it isn't that external person or factor it's a story or a pattern of thought that I start to think. So, you know, people will do things that you don't like and they'll say things that are unkind and events will happen in your life that doesn't feel good sometimes. But ultimately, to have a better relationship, you have to understand that happiness stems from our own internal interpretations of what is happening. So it's our own story about what is happening. And we can choose happiness in any situation. And now for me, I used to be in, like my nature is and has been um, to like hang on to things, to churn through, through, like chew it, like a Oh my God, like my pattern of thought would be very circular, very, um, didn't feel good. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I wouldn't let go of events that um, hurt me or, or people who I perceived as hurt me, you know? Um, and so I have a kind of a rule of thumb right now is that if someone does something that bothers me, I'll, I'll tell them. And if they continue to do that, then I just let them go. I just move on because it isn't worth trying to change someone. Um, my mother used to say, if you had only done X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, well, do you want me to get into a time machine? And, you know, and then she would say, well, you shouldn't have done it in the first place. Well, that like leaves, I'm like, okay, whatever, <laughs> you know, like, had no um, ability in in her like to change her like to change her mind about anything. But as I've grown now, I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to be stuck in that bitterness of the past. I don't want to be um, chewing on events or people that did stuff for years and years and years, which is a waste of time and and only creates more opportunities like that in my life. And I believe that on a metaphysical level, I believe that the more you think a certain way, the more it shows up in your life. And you have opportunities. I'm not going to say they show up for lessons because they don't. They just show up as what you've, what you've been thinking about. And you have an opportunity to break that pattern. So how do you break that pattern, right? Well, number one, you take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. It, you know, and, and some of you are probably listening and saying, no, you know, it's their fault. Or what if someone does X, Y, and Z and it's so horrible. And it, again, it's like, okay, that event happened in your life. And so what are you going, how are you going to perceive it? How, what story are you going to tell about it? How are you going to look at it? Um, feel your feelings, of course, because you do have a story around it because we all do. We're humans. That's what we do. But getting back to relationships, if you're expecting someone else to make you happy, 
or expecting to make someone else happy. Now there's, there's another story we can be talking about. You're setting up yourself for disappointment, which also reminds me of um, a TikTok I saw recently of this guy saying that all women are going to disappoint you. And I just was like, are you out of your mind? Dude, seriously, you are not evolved. But okay, that's fine. We'll just move along, <laughs> you know. If you're in a relationship with someone and like I, I work on this with friendships, you know, this is the thing I, I like really highlight in my friendship is we're both responsible for our part of the friendship. You know, um, sometimes I'm the person that initiates plans and sometimes I'm not. And I start to notice, am I more the initiator or am I? you know, less the initiator and some, some friendships I'm less and sometimes I'm more, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting, but I know it's important if I want to spend time with someone or see them or build a relationship with them, I know it's super important for me to like make plans with them and see them and, and give to them, you know, as well as receive from them. So when you are, responsible for your own happiness, it will set the stage for honesty and thoughtfulness and selfless love. And partners, friendship partners or romantic partners work on becoming whole and complete on their own. They don't ask the other person to complete them. That whole Jerry Maguire thing, you complete me. That's bullshit. You heard it? it's bullshit. It's romantic, but it's freaking bullshit because these are two complete people that are coming into a relationship. It's not two halves making a whole. That's just not, that's just not going to be workable in the long term. And we see this in so many relationships that I grew up with, so many relationships um, that I hope I haven't passed on my kids, probably did, but you know, they've got the therapy jar. <laughs> you know, they can work that out. No, we talk, we talk a lot about this stuff. But if you are a complete happy person and you believe that about yourself and you're completely responsible for your own happiness, your own emotional well-being, you welcome a relationship as an added part of your life added friendship, added support, added love. And you take responsibility for your own needs by communicating them to your partner or addressing them yourself. I think in uh, David Richo's book, um, I think that's how you spell it, R-I-C-H-O, and I read a lot of him, um, because, you know, the... Uh, how to be an adult in relationships. He talked about um, our partners being responsible, if you will, responsible for 25% of our needs and the rest we, we do for ourselves. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And as I have grown and become having a better relationship with myself, I, th I think the quality of my relationships have shifted. And I, ha I think in a TikTok or I don't know, maybe it was another podcast I did, but um, I have friendships that are deep and intimate and I have friendships that are more, you know, um, acquaintance-like that I don't know them deeply and they don't know me deeply, but when we get together, we have a great time together. Uh, and I don't look for that emotional intimacy f with them. Like I, I get that in other places. Um, so there's different levels of relationships, but as time goes on for me, the quality of relationships that I want to have are deep and intimate. They are, um, I want to know you. I want to be, I'm curious about you. I want to hear your thoughts. I don't, you don't always have to agree with me. I'm in a place in my life where I am very confident with who I am in the world. Um, am I perfect? No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I guess if, you know, if it means I'm perfectly me in myself right now, yeah, then yeah, that's, that's what's happening. 
Um, so better relationships will start with you, you know, so that's one of the things that, um, this Michael Sorensen 10 days to better relationships PDF <laughs> is really spot on. And, um, it's choosing to be happy no matter what. So that's like day one of his better relationship challenge. Um, the second is, and I'm going to just cover two today. And then on the next podcast, I'll cover some more um, and maybe get some people to come and have conversations with me about relationships and friendships. Um, but this day two is, the most important relationship skill that you were never taught is validation. And his definition of validation is, in essence, the act of helping someone feel heard and understood. And we hear that all the time, especially uh, what I hear a lot from men is they want to, they want to feel validated. They want to feel heard. They want to feel understood. Um, and it's, I think it's really important for us to notice things about our friendships or our partners and connect with them in a way that definitely makes them feel heard and, and seen and that is one of the practices that I feel I'm pretty good at. And I feel that way because I validate myself. Again, it starts with yourself. And I'll, I'll share, I'll be transparent in um, certain areas that I'm working on right now is, and this has been lifelong. <laughs> and some of you will relate to it. It's, it is definitely a relationship with myself and it's a relationship with the body I have. And um, for as long as I can remember, my mother, who was 5'7", I'm 5'3 three and 3 quarters. I just round up to 5'4". Um, my mother was 5'7", was fixated on a weight scale, like that she had to be 124 pounds. And I want you to take that in for a freaking minute, okay? And um, so can you imagine being 5'7"? three and three quarters and having a mother that was fixated on the scale being 124 pounds, 126 pounds, whatever, how crazy that is right now. And I look at that and I forgive her because that was the era she was raised in, but that like made an impact on how I saw myself. Like I, I was, and still wrestle with this a little bit. Well, a lot, um, not as much as I used to. Uh, with how my body looks, the aesthetics of it. And I am a freaking athlete and I, my body does this amazing stuff. Uh, I lift heavy stuff. I do CrossFit. I, I, my body performs. So the, the scale would suggest otherwise, <laughs> but um, I know that for my internal self-talk is I have to validate myself and say, look what your thighs did today. What, look at what those glutes lifted today. Like, seriously, you're an amazing being. You are, your body is so amazing. And, um, you, it houses you. It's healthy. It's healthy. And you get up and you do stuff all the time. So, Instead of saying, don't beat yourself up, I, I, I validate on a daily basis what my body can do for me and what my body is doing for me. And that has helped me. Um, that helps me shift. Now, I'm in a sport, Olympic weightlifting, where you have to, be, you have to like eat a lot of food and you have to eat properly. And if you compete in a weight class, which is freaking crazy, um, like I choose a sport where 
weight is important. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's one of the things that I've been working on is validating myself first, but also it helps me be less critical of other people and be in a relationship with someone, whether it's a friendship or a relationship and really see them for who they are and really be curious about them and validate them because it, what does it do for you not to? Well, it doesn't do anything, but what it does for you is it lights someone else up. And as humans, we have a deep seated need for connection, regardless of our age, our gender, our backgrounds, and men need it as much as women do. And they need to be, they need to feel heard. They need to feel understood. And we can't have better relationships if we refuse to validate other people. And validation is not a problem because a lot of us are internally seeking that validation. We really are. And so why not give it? Why not? So here's a way of how to validate. For example, if you're talking with your significant other at the end of a long day, you can tell something is bothering that bothering them. So you ask what's going on and they say, I can't stand so-and-so, you know, this work event we've been planning. She keeps changing the plans. She doesn't listen to me or care about me, you know, at all about what I have to say, what the rest of us want to do. It's driving me crazy. So what would you say? Well, it would be probably tempting to jump in and give advice. Research has shown that choosing to validate is often the best way to help. So you might say something like, seriously, ugh, that would drive me crazy. And it offers just that saying, just saying that offers justification for the feeling. Because I'm in this world of assisting and helping and guiding people. I have to like tread very carefully not to give advice right away if, unless they ask it. And so by holding on to the advice for a moment, which is really hard for me. <laughs> I'll just admit it. You instead you show up and you and you really hear what they're saying. You you allow them. You grant them that space to. I like the word granting than allowing, so I changed it as you could see. Um, you grant them the space to be where they are, and then you can show them that you care by being present to that. And there are lots of other validating responses and some of them are like, wow, that can be frustrating. Or she really said that? Oh my gosh, I'd be angry about that too. Or, oh, that's so sad. Um, whatever the feeling is that they, they're, they're going through. Um, or you have every route, right to be frustrated or whatever, you know? Um, and then, you know, step into, for me, what I do is I say, you know, how can I support you? Because often um, that's a way for me to not give advice, but to really hear what they need. And some friends have said, I just want you to listen. Or some friends say, um, what would you do? Uh, do you have any guidance for me? I'm really interested in that. Um, and I have gotten in myself into trouble by giving advice before they're before asked. So validation is a really good go-to for me. Um, I don't think, I, I guess it must be said that invalidating responses like you'll be fine, it could be worse, or at least it's not X, Y, and Z, which I'm guilty of as well. Um, or just put a smile on your face, be positive. I mean, that's, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> you know, that you think positive. Um, and a lot of it is I have to remember, and most of us have to remember that we are not in the same place they are in this moment. So in order to love and respect and care for the people in our lives, we show up for them with curiosity and to validate that their emotions that they're going through are right for, for what they are going through right now. 
All right. So in our next podcast, we're going to talk a little bit more about creating better relationships in your life. And when I give psychic readings or intuitive guidance, I can see how people's thoughts and patterns create what they're living and the possibility for their futures. So if you'd like to know where you're at in the energetic field, please check out my website, check out my link tree, come join us on Locals, um, robinrichardson.locals.com. This is a new community that I'm creating and welcoming people to because this, um, this life that we live is really sometimes really a sh challenge and to have a community of like-minded people who come on, get, get their positive vibes, get, get their little mini free trainings, which I'm going to be offering. Um, I think it's a good place. So if you're inclined and resonate with that, please join us at, on, the, on the locals community. Um, currently you can, it's free to join. Um, if you'd like to support it, um, it's five bucks a month. And that would be helpful to keep the content going. So please um, check that out. And I will see you next time. This has been your psychic girlfriend, Robin Richardson. And have a wonderful and mystical day. Enjoy. <laughs>